Today we are talking about how to get into game development. My name is Lana. I've been a full-time indie developer for about four years now. I've also been streaming on Twitch during those four years of the full-time development. And on the stream, we've had a lot of conversations about how to get into game development. And I wanted to share some of those takeaways with you in a video um, so that people could learn if they're wanting to know how to get into it. I've broken the advice down into three main tips. The first tip is to have a strong sense of direction. The more clearly you know what you want to be doing, the more you can start learning things that will help you along that path. If you don't know what you want to be doing, that's fine. Uh, just try different things until you know what you like and start going in that path. When it comes to having a sense of direction, there's a few different areas that this is important in. The first one is knowing what you want to do with your game development. Do you want to do it as a hobby on the side, as a passion? Do you want to be doing it as a career and do it full time? Do you want to work for a big studio making major AAA games? Or do you want to work for a smaller studio? If you want to be doing it as a indie developer, do you want to work with other people? Do you want to work alone? All of these things can help you paint a better picture of what you want to do so that you can learn the skills you need to be successful. I'd like to take a minute to stop and thank our sponsor for the video, Root Energy Drink is a new energy drink that is made for developers. It uses a lot of natural ingredients that have a lot of studies showing that they're helpful for things like long-lasting energy, um, helping your eyes. It has a lot of root ingredients such as carrots, ginger. You can really taste the ginger and it's really nice. Uh, I like also mixing it with juice. It's kind of like a non-alcoholic uh, fancy drink, you know what I mean? And it's nice to have while I'm making games and while I'm working, there's a link in the description of the video to check it out if you want to give it a shot. So if you want to be working for a major studio making big games, um, something to keep in mind is that you're going to want to be more specialized. Uh, they have many people working on every game and each person has a very specific role. You're probably going to want to pick one thing and go in that direction and get really good at that one skill. For example, if you want to be a game artist, and you want to work for a big studio, it's a good idea to be to know what type of artist you want to be. Do you want to be a concept artist? Do you want to be an environment concept artist or a character or prop? Check out job postings and see what kind of roles are being uh, are opening up in these types of studios, and you get an idea of what they will be doing and what is required for getting that role. But if you really want to work on multiple parts of the game, then I would definitely work towards uh, working in a smaller studio because that's more likely to be useful to them. If you want to be doing it independently, uh, it's a good idea to know if you want to work with other people or if you want to work solo. It's definitely more work if you do a game on your own, of course, but if you work with other people, then you are now needing to work on communication and managing um, who does what and who has say in what areas, and that can be challenging. For most of these different roles, you're probably going to want to be able to show what you know um, if you're working independently, I guess you don't really need to show anyone because it's just you. Uh, but for pretty much all the other ones, you're going to want to show what you know. Some studios are open to self-learning. Um, and if you're working for yourself, you can decide if you want to go the self-learning route. Uh, this definitely takes much more discipline and it's very difficult to know what to learn next. Uh, there's definitely benefits to going to a college or university for game development and really it's it's up to you to decide your learning style what's available and what you want to be doing with it to make that decision and finally even though this is a lot more work for the studios hiring so i would say it's probably not the most ideal um you can just show your work in a portfolio i would recommend doing this regardless but if they if you have a way to show them without them having to do work and spend time learning about your skills that's ideal but as an alternative you can put together some videos for example walking through projects you've done showing what it does showing what you what part you did and how it works that will explain to them that you know what you're talking about that will explain to them what um, things you have practiced doing and what the result looks like and if you can give them a demo of what you've made in that project after that's uh, a great way for them to do, check what you've made check it over see what you've done and a few videos and projects like this might be a great way to explain to an employer that you, what things you know and how you go about doing them. If you want to work with a team of people, I highly recommend that you go into that uh, search with something to prove for yourself. If you're an artist, have a portfolio of art, 
you a programmer, have some examples of things you've worked on, maybe those videos I mentioned, and uh, show the potential uh, teammates what you have to offer so that they have confidence in you. It's also helpful to know what type of games you want to be making. So if you're going to be doing the programming, um, knowing what genre of game is a great place to start. If you really love RPGs, for example, um, I definitely recommend going in that direction. Uh, it does seem overwhelming compared to maybe a platformer, uh, but if you're not going to be using any of the skills of a 2D platformer, for example, in an RPG, then it doesn't, I mean, it's, it's always helpful to learn the engine and the language that you're working in, but it's, you may as well go in the direction that you want, like start learning how to do basic dialogue systems, start learning movement, start learning a very sim simplified version of a combat system, start learning an inventory system, a quest system, and then eventually you can put these together to form a game. Um, but you can definitely break that down to learn the basics uh, in the direction you want rather than learning something unrelated. If you want to be doing concept art, then start doing concept art and find a way to work with other people and apply it in different scenarios. That's a great way to get better at that skill. If you want to be doing environment art, um, maybe make a scene in a game engine where there's just, you can walk around in it and explore it. Um, you can practice the lighting in it, for example. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do to practice uh, the art in an applied way, whether you're working with people or on your own. And the last bonus tip is to get started right away. It's so easy to put it off until you have time. I did that for so long. I put off game development thinking it was gonna be such a big undertaking and I just don't have the time to do it. But I ended up starting to get into it and I learned it so much faster, uh, at least the, you know the basics where I could start playing around with things way faster than I ever expected. And I started having fun so early on that I was honestly just surprised and if I could go back I would have started it sooner because I would have been way further along by now. So I highly recommend downloading Unity, Unreal, Godot, Core, one of the game making platforms engines um, or if you want to go into the art try get Blender, it's free, or try Maya, it's the got a free trial. Um, just start digging into it, do some tutorials, see what it's about. In the worst case you find out okay this is gonna take more time to do than I have and you can block out that time if you want to dig into it later. All of this advice is comes from my own personal experience uh, as well as conversations with people in chat during streams um, but I do recommend that you talk to people as many as you can hear what they've learned and see what tips they have to share with you because it's always great to learn from others experiences and that can help you in your journey. So good luck and I hope you have fun. See you next time.